Hello everyone, good morning and welcome to our Physics for Engineers lecture class. So I would like to welcome you all to second semester of learning engineering. Okay, so for this semester, for this course, we will be having an asynchronous class. Okay, so that means that you have the flexibility to work on your module and when you are going to to watch the recording for the week so every week i will be recording what i would like to share with you about the topic of each module so i already posted our schedule of activities so i, I will just be recording the lectures so that means that we are not going to have our tboa classes However, we are going to have our consultation hours. So in that consultation hours, it will be every Wednesday at 7.40 to 8.55 a.m. So I will be turning on this Google Meet link. I already posted this link also. And I will be waiting for you guys. So even though if you are not there, I will be there every Wednesday at 7.40 a.m. to 8.55 a.m. So with that, I will not be giving lecture, but I will just be answering your questions. So it, that means that you have to read the module before Wednesday. You have to start working on the module before Wednesday of each week so that by that time during our consultation hours, you will be raising all your questions, clarifications with regards to the topic, okay? So I already posted all modules from prelim to final, but you cannot proceed to the midterm and final modules unless you had taken the major exams, all right? So that means you can start working before Wednesday, start working on your modules. And if you have questions and clarifications, you can um, you can ask me right away during that consultation hour. And by Friday, we do not have TBOA class. Okay. So by Sunday, you can you can submit your answers. So all the deadlines for the modules will be always on Sundays. All right, is that clear with you? Now, our exams will be open camera and it will be on Saturday of each exam week. And that will be at 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. So that means you have to secure a very reliable internet connection even for that only 1.5 hour okay so that is only one and a half hour so um kindly kindly secure a very stable internet connection for that so once you open your exam there will be an access code and i will be giving you the access code at 10 a.m so make sure that you come early and before 11 30 a.m you must take photo of the solutions of the problems before 11.30 a.m. You must upload it already on Canvas. So by 11.30, you cannot see the exam anymore. Okay? And if you fail to take the exam on the scheduled date and time, you cannot take the exam anymore. All right, so unless for those very valid reasons that are stipulated in your student's handbook. Okay, so I already posted also the schedule when you are going to submit the modules. Again, it will be every Sunday midnight. Our prelim, midterm, and final exam schedule, that will be Saturday of each exam week at 10 a.m. to 11.30 a.m. And our consultation hours will be every Wednesday from 7.40 a.m. to 8.55 a.m. Again, I will not be giving lecture during those consultation hours, but I will only be answering your questions regarding our topic. I will be here in the Google Meet again, even though you will not show up, okay? But I will be waiting for you 
from 7.40 to 8.55 a.m. every Wednesday. All right, so let me welcome you to our first topic. Okay, but before that, by the way, I will be showing to you um, the modules part of Canvas. So I will be sharing to you my screen. Hold on for a while. All right. Okay, so um, before module one, you have reorientation of academic policies. Okay, so we have our academic policies at La Salle University. We also have our academic integrity policies. So kindly read all of this and and kindly do what is asked. And our permanent Google Meet link is also there. And you cannot proceed to module one if you do not open this one by one, okay? And for each module, you should open each part one by one before proceeding to the next module and so on, okay? So uh, I don't want to hear from you means it's locked means and so on and so on okay it is all there you can unlock if you will open one by one okay or or one part of the module at the time all right so let us have now our first module which is vectors i will be using an application we're in for a while. Where is Google Meet here? Oh, there. Okay. Screen broadcast. All right. So for this module, um, we will be talking about vectors, okay? And we already know from senior high school, vectors are those quantities that have both magnitude and the direction, okay? So um, scalars are different, vectors are different. So scalars only um, show the magnitude, okay? So when we say scalars, examples would be mass. There is no direction for mass, okay? However, for the vector quantity, we have the weight. There is also the direction of the weight because weight is a force. It is a gravitational force. So when we say force, it has both the direction and the magnitude. So that is a vector quantity. So if we are going to represent a vector quantity, we have this. Okay, Say, for example, vector A in books or in the websites, it will be bold in bold letters. You can also have the arrow on top, or you can also have just like that a half arrow. So that's how you're going to represent vectors. Okay, so you can determine um, if that is a vector if it is being represented that way. Now, how are we going to add or subtract vectors? In your senior high, this is only a review. We are going to add vectors if they go in the same direction. So say, for example, you have vector A, which is 100 newtons, and we have another vector, which is vector B, which is, uh, sorry, which is 200 newtons. Okay, so they are both going to the same direction, so that means you are just going to simply add. So um, A plus B, the resultant vector, okay, R would be the resultant vector. That means that is the sum of the vectors, all right? So just simply add the magnitude. It is 300 newtons and going to the right, the same direction of, as the two vectors. Now, if you are going in different directions, say for example, you have vector A 
going to the right and it is 100 newtons and we have also vector b going to the left which is 200 newtons now we are going to subtract the magnitude of the two vectors so our resultant vector will be 100 newtons and the direction of the resultant vector will be the direction of the vector which has the larger magnitude so in this case 200 newtons is larger sorry 200 newtons is larger than a so that means our resultant vector is going to the left we take the direction of the vector having the larger magnitude all right so let us have another how are we going to wait guys technology nowadays is very challenging okay so another page all right so um in adding subtracting vectors we can also do the pythagorean method all right so if we have vector a going to that direction and vector b going up and they create a right angle okay so if vectors create a right angle we can use the pythagorean method in order to get the resultant vector if we are going to add a and b okay so adding vectors a and b will give us a resultant vector which will be the square root of the magnitude of vector a squared and vector b squared okay so that would be our pythagorean method aside from the pythagorean method we also have the parallelogram method okay so say for example we have vector a going to that direction vector b going to that direction they are not forming a right angle okay so this is not a right angle here so we can use the parallelogram method for this in order for us to use the parallelogram method we are just going to to create other vectors that would the uh, that would be parallel to the two vectors okay and for this um it's hard for me to do we are going to to create another vector which is parallel to vector b sorry guys for my drawing okay just like that that is parallel to vector b and then another vector which is parallel to vector a and then from the origin here going to the head of the two vectors that would be the resultant vector okay so again just draw parallel vectors so that is a parallelogram method okay and next to the parallelogram method we also have the head to tail method okay in head to tail method you are going to attach the the tail of the next vector to the head of the previous vector okay so say for example okay so take note um we do have our coordinate plane this is x and y okay and we have our directions north south east and west okay so say for example we have vector a going in this direction and we have vector b we are going to attach vector b to the head of vector a and the resultant vector will be from the tail of the first vector to the head of the last vector so that would be our resultant vector okay so head to tail method the resultant vector will be drawn from the tail of the first vector to the head of the last vector okay so this will be a plus b is equal to r 
now if we are going to have a vector this way and this is a b and then another vector going here that would be vector c how are we going to get the resultant vector we are going to attach the tail of the first vector to the head of the last vector so that is our resultant vector which is a plus b plus c is equal to r so in graphical method or this head to tail method you have to use the graphing paper as well as the ruler protractor and pencil okay so in your module you have your exercises for that okay so i don't need to elaborate any further because you have that in your senior high school already or even in, in junior high school now for the component method for component method we are going to to get the x and y components or separate the vector into its x and y components so say for example we have vector a it is along the x and y axis all right and it is at 30 degrees going north from east okay so here say for example vector a is 10 newtons now you are going to get the x component as what i've said and the y component okay so for the x component of our vector a it will be the magnitude which is 10 newtons and we are going to use the trigonometric functions sine and cosine so do not forget your sokatoa from trigonometry okay now our 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 x component for vector a is here along the x axis and the y component of vector a is also here along the y axis so with that remember sokatoa all right so when we say um cosine it is adjacent over hypotenuse our hypotenuse now is the resultant vector this one this is our hypotenuse okay so here our x component is adjacent okay what is adjacent it is near okay so we are going to use cosine theta for that one okay or cosine sorry okay cosine 30 this should be 30 here i cannot draw okay that one alone okay so that would be cosine 30 so the x component of vector a is 10 times cosine 30. on the other hand the y component the y component is here and if we are going to to transfer that here it's gonna be opposite to your angle so we are going to use sine this one for this one so we have 10 newtons times sine 30. Okay, why sine? Sine is opposite over hypotenuse. As what I've said, um, your y component is here. We're going to transfer this here. It will now be opposite. It is at bang. Okay. Well, for the cosine adjacent, it is tapad from the angle. Okay. So that's how you're going to use the the component method and there is also example in your module and there is also an exercise in your module that you can answer for the x and y component okay so say for example we have two vectors a and b a is going this way again and b is going that way how are we going to use the component method Okay, and there will be, of course, an angle here and another angle here. And, and they are in different directions. So we are going to get the resultant vector for this one. And we are going to use the summation of vectors along the x-axis 
Okay, so um, I will just use, say for example, you have a B. summation of vectors along the x-axis because you are going to, to add all, all the angles. That, I will just use F for force, okay? Fx squared plus Fy squared. That will be the resultant. So that means you are going to get the AX, you are going to get the AY, you are going to get the BX, you are going to get the BY, and you add all. And take note of the negative signs, guys. Okay, so, so here, for example, AX is positive. It is at the first quadrant, but here, BX is negative because it is in the second quadrant. AY is positive and BY is also positive. Okay, so take note of the negative sign. Okay, because it B is here along the negative x-axis. Okay, so get the summation for all the x-axis the summation and get the summation of all the y-axis summation what do you mean by summation you just add all right so by the way that is summation and that is summation sorry okay so you can get now the resultant vector and in getting the resultant force in getting the resultant force you just use the formula um Inverse tangent, summation along the y over summation along the x. Okay, so that will just be our formula for the direction or the angle of our resultant force. So for this, you have y to be positive, of course. When we take a look here, the summation is positive. And for x, we do not know which direction is it either positive or negative it depends on our given and if the summation of forces along y is positive of course that would be in the first or second quadrant and if the summation of forces along y is negative of course that would be in the third or fourth quadrant okay and that goes the same with the x if it is negative um second or third quadrant if it is positive first or fourth quadrant Okay, so so much more about that. That is only a review from your senior high. Now we will proceed to unit vectors. Okay, so when we say unit vectors, these are now the vectors with unit of one. Okay, one unit. So in here, we are going to take a look at our xyz plane okay so this will be x this is y and this is z okay so here along the x-axis you have i hat that is the unit vector and along the y-axis that would be the j hat and along the z-axis that would be the k hat that would be our unit vectors for xyz for x i for y j and for z k half okay now i will give you an example for this um i will be sharing here from the laptop and can we take a screenshot of the problem so that when i write here you have a copy of the problem all right so you will take a look at at the problem and then take a look at my solution all right so here is the problem again kindly take a photo of the problem or a screenshot of the problem so when i solve later you are going to take a glance at what the problem says again okay so here is our sample problem Consider the three vectors below. Vector A is 3i hat plus 0j hat. Vector B is 2 square root of 3i hat plus 2j hat. And vector C is negative 5i hat plus 5 square root 3j hat. You are going to or you are asked to draw the three vectors 
after going to draw them on the 3D plane, you are asked for the length or magnitude of A, B, and C. And you are asked the angle between vectors A and C, vectors A and B, and vectors B and C. Okay, so let us try this um, problem. Again, take a photo of the problem so that when I solve, you can glance at the problem again. <clears throat> All right, so let me go back to my writing pad. <clears throat> um, Google Meet. Start broadcast. Sorry, guys. Okay, so let us solve now our problem. Okay, first we have our given vectors. Vector A is 3i plus 0j hat. How are we going to draw them? Okay, again we have, oh, sorry, xyz plane naman day taron. Erase. Okay, so we have our XYZ plane here. And we have 3i hat and 0j hat. Okay, so in our XYZ plane, since this is unit vector, we divide it with just the same um, spaces. So that would be, okay, when you do this on your own, on your paper and ruler, the spaces must be equal, okay? But this time, we are having technology here, so I cannot draw them equally. So we have 3i hat. 3i hat, that would be along the x-axis. So 1, 2, 3, we have our, our dot here, okay? And the and the j hat is zero so that means the y coordinate is zero so from the origin up to three that would be our vector a now next for vector b two square root of three i hat plus two j hat so it's basically just um um drawing the points or, or identifying the points in your x, y plane. So 2 square root of 3 i hat that is along the x again. So maybe it's somewhere here after 2 but before 3. And 2 j hat, so this will be here for the 2 j hat. And it's gonna be somewhere here. here sorry. So from the origin up to the point that would be our b hat oh b vector b sorry vector b and finally for vector c you have negative 5 i hat plus 5 square root of 3 j hat so we are negative 5 along the x axis so we are going to extend our graph here. One, two, three, four, five. Again, it should be equal when you do this by yourself. And then along the y-axis, five square root of three. We have already three, four, five, and it's square root of three. So somewhere here. So it's going to be here. And then from the origin up to that point, that would be our vector c again and again when you do this on your own um you have to use your ruler in order for you to have the the accuracy in drawing this so this is how your vectors a and a b and c look like okay on the on the xyz plane Okay, now you are asked for the length or magnitude of A, B, and C. Okay, so so we, we already say that vector is 
both magnitude and direction. Okay, so in order to get the magnitude, we are just simply going to use the formula that is already given also in your module. So with that, uh, vector A will just be, or the magnitude of vector A will just be equivalent to the square root of the i hat, which is 3 and then squared, plus for the j hat, this, that is 0. So the 3 squared, square root of 3 squared, so that would just be equal to 3. So the magnitude of, of vector A is 3. Now for vector B, we have 2 square root of 3 squared. This is 3 and then squared plus 2 squared, okay? Just use your calculator with that one, and that is equal to 4. And for vector C, we also have for our i, negative 5 squared plus 5 squared of 3, and you square this one also, okay? And extract the square root, and that would be equal to 10, okay? So the length or magnitude of vectors A, B, and C are 3, 4, and 10 respectively. Okay, and finally, you are asked for the angle between vectors A and B. You are asked for the angle between vectors um, A and C, rather A and B and B and C. Okay, so um, this is A and C. That is what is asked. A and B is also asked, and, and at the same time, B and C is also asked. How are we going to get the, the angle between them? Okay, so first, let us have, shall I erase this part here? In, in the, uh, no, I should not erase because I will be posting this also. Uh -huh. Okay, so let us have vector A and C first, okay? So with that, we have the dot product of AC is equal to the magnitude of A and C cosine theta. Okay, this formula, this is also in your module, okay? So, um... This, um, what I am discussing is an example that is not in your module, but an application of what is in the module. The other examples in the module are different, okay? So you have many sources. All right. So for this, A um, dot C, for A, the X is 3, or, or the I hat would be 3, and negative 5 for C. So you have 3 times negative 5, the dot product, times 0, times 5 square root of 3. And that would be equal to what is the magnitude of A? It is 3 and the magnitude of C is 10. And cosine theta. Alright? So, oh, I, I will turn to the other page. So theta is equal to 120 degrees. I don't have to, to show to you how to get theta or how to solve theta. I know you already know how because that is in your trigonometry. So next, um, between vectors A and B. Okay, so again, dot product for A and B is equal to the magnitude of A times B cosine theta. A and B, we have 3 times 2 square root of 3 plus 0 times 2. Magnitude of A is ito, si A, 3 and then magnitude of B is Four cosine theta, and theta is thirty degrees. And finally, between B and C, 
wherein we have magnitudes B, C, cosine, theta. B, we have 2 square root of 3, 4, I times negative 5 plus 2 times 5 square root of 3. And the magnitude of B is 4 times magnitude of C is 10. Cosine theta again. No, I cannot write theta anymore. Okay, so theta is 90 degrees. Okay, that is between B and C. And let us go back here to our, our drawing. Okay, so between A and C, how much was that? The angle between A and Z is 120 degrees because let us check if our answer is correct. I will choose another color. Okay, so between A and C is 120 degrees. Between A and B, the angle is 30 degrees and between B and C the angle is 90 degrees and if you are going to add 120 is 90 plus 30 so our answers are correct okay again um this is our topic for this week about vectors so we had reviewed what vectors are we have reviewed how to get the resultant vector how to add or subtract vectors by using the pythagorean parallelogram graphical or head to tail method as well as the component method and i had also given you unit vectors all right so i will be posting this recording your your you will you will be watching this recording to guide you with our module, okay? We are not going to have our TDOA. You can, you can watch this recording anytime you want. But I want you to watch, read, and work on your module before Wednesday of each week, okay? Because I will be here on the Google Meet every wednesday from what time are we meeting every week 7 40 a.m was that what i said earlier okay from 7 40 a.m to 8 55 a.m i will be here in the google meet every wednesday i will not be here in the google meet during class period friday okay because that tdoa will be this already the recording so every Wednesday, I will be waiting for you. I will not give you lecture, but I will answer your questions and give you clarifications. Okay, so before Wednesday, you must have read or read, sorry, you must have read your module. You must have started working on your module. So if you have questions and clarifications, I can address that one to you. Okay, and submissions of modules will be every Sunday midnight and your major exams will be open camera every Saturday of the exam week 10 to 11.30 a.m. So kindly secure a very, very stable internet connection. And if you have questions, if you have problems, kindly email me on Canvas. Okay, so just drop me a message on Canvas. And I will not be using our Facebook um, Messenger to answer your questions. You also have the discussions board on Canvas. You use that also. And I will be addressing your questions there. Okay, so if you have any problem, email me. Do not give me your name anymore. I don't need your name. I just need your section code. Do not forget to state your section code when you message me. Okay, so that's all for this week's um, discussion. And see you next week for another topic. Have a great morning, everyone.